first thing you need to do before you start your business is to make sure that this is the right business for you in the first place. For example, if you don't like animals, the worst thing you could do is start a pet sitting business because you're going to be around them all day long. And if you love animals, you need to still be able to separate out that you will be a business owner, not just playing with some pets. Because when you run a business, you're going to do a lot of other things besides spending the day with these animals. You will have paperwork, invoicing, billing, marketing for new customers, plus a host of other things that you're going to need to accomplish. As a business owner, you will wear a lot of hats in your business. You want to love what you do, but make sure you identify as the business owner and not just a pet sitter. You just happen to have a pet sitting business. Now that you're sure you want to do this, let's go over a few of the key things you need to tackle before you take on that first pet sitting job. The first thing you need to do is your research. Keep in mind, research is so important because it is going to save you time and money, two of the most important things you have as a small business owner. We will highlight quickly what you should be researching. There are three key areas that you want to dive into, your competition, the legal requirements, as well as any of the monetary needs you're going to have. When researching your competition, you want to look at small local competition, but also the larger big box type of competitors. The first thing most people tend to do is they focus on what the competitors are doing poorly. And this is an easy one because we always want to point out what our competition does badly. Is there a terrible service going on? Do they have attitudes, for example? Maybe they have terrible employees or they're extremely expensive or they just do a bad job. You probably already have an idea of the negatives that the local competition has. But now I want you to focus on what they do well. There is a reason they are still in business. There's a reason they continue to do well and customers continue to pay them. So while you're looking at what they do poorly, please also focus on what they do well, because this is going to give you the information you need on how you can stand out over your competition. Don't be arrogant and think you automatically will be better just because you are better than their bad traits. Yes, it helps, but like I mentioned earlier, they are still in business for a reason. Now, there's some other things that you need to look at with your competition. For example, look at the quality of the products or services that they offer. In your case, how long do they offer their services for? Do they do it by the hour? Do they do it for the day? Do they do overnights? There's all kinds of questions that you can ask. Do they do it from their home or do they do it at the location? Do they go to people's houses or do they have to bring the pets to them? Do they have pop buys just to be able to give medicine to any animal that might be in need while the owner is working? Do they only do dogs and cats or can they do horses, reptiles, or other pets that you're willing to do? This is going to help you determine if there is a gap in the market that you might be able to fill. You also need to look at their pricing. This will help you stay competitive. I do not want you to be in a race to the bottom on pricing. It's not about you being under the price of your competition. Your competitors have different pricing for different reasons. Plus, you have no idea if they're profitable at that pricing or not. Your number one goal as a business owner is to have a profitable business. For example, these larger companies have a high payroll, therefore must charge more because they have higher expenses and costs. Yes, they've created a great image out there, but the reason they charge more is because they have a bigger business they need to run. You need to charge a fair price for your services, and you can justify a good solid price by highlighting what makes your services stand out. So it's really important that you look at all of this. And part of the way that you stand out is having a really good understanding of what a client gets for the prices that they're charged by your competitors. Your goal is to not just be another pet sitting business. At the end of the day, you need to figure out what's the pain point you're going to solve for your customers and how are you going to stand out over this competition. For example, you are taking away the anxiety many pet owners have with leaving their fur babies at home alone while they are at work all day or maybe off on vacation. Or maybe one of their pets has a medical need and they can't give them medicine while they're at work. You have the solution to this pain. This is the pain point that I'm talking about. This is where people are willing to hand over cash for you to solve the pain. Clarify the pain point you solve better than your competition and you will have a leg up. 
Now, another part of your research is to dive into the legal requirements. For example, are you going to run your business as an LLC, which is a legal entity where the company is actually owned by this LLC, or will you be doing it as a DBA, doing business as? This is where you're doing business as a sole proprietor, but under a business name. An LLC is a legal entity owning the company, whereas in a doing business as, you personally own the company. Either way, you're going to pay taxes on the entire thing. It's just that the LLC is going to give a little bit more protection in case something happens. Now, it's really important that you dive into your state requirement because I can give you all the advice in the world, but at the end of the day, each state determines the requirements if you have to be an LLC or if you can even do it as a DBA. And they each have different requirements as to what needs to be filed with the state as well. So please make sure that you are looking at your state requirements. The LLC, as I mentioned, offers more protection, but for many small business owners, a DBA is just fine. But just seek out a local attorney if you are unsure what is best for your business. I go into more detail on this in my Start a Small Business course found in the show notes. Now, some other legal requirements that you really need to dive into is what kind of licensing do you need to have? Do you have to have any permits? What kind of insurance are you going to need? There's all kinds of different legal requirements that you might need to operate your business. And these can vary by city, county, and state. So it's important that you make sure you go down to City Hall and find out what the requirements are for you locally, and then reach out to your local county and state for any other items you might have missed. For example, you might have one set of rules if you work from your home and another set if you go into other people's homes. Same with your insurance needs, by the way. Insurance coverage needs to make sure that it covers you for whichever scenario you are doing. Whatever you do, please make sure that you are meeting all the legal requirements for your business. So please make sure you look at licensing, permit, insurance, or anything else that you might be legally required to have. Now, a lot of people often ask, do you need a business plan? Well, yes and no. The first thing you have to understand is what a traditional business plan is typically used for. Normally, it is required if you're going to borrow money from a bank, SBA loan, or if you're going to buy a franchise. But this is not the case probably for your pet sitting business. The vast majority of people are just going to start the business and grow it as they earn more money. We call this bootstrapping. I still recommend that you do the exercise of creating one, although you don't need a formal one. And the reason is it allows you to take all of this research and plan out your business and answer some tough questions that you need to know. For example, how much money do you plan to make in your first year? What about your third year? What are going to be your costs of running your business? How do you plan to market your business? All kinds of good questions are prompted when you're writing a business plan. The questions in the business plan are going to help guide you to make sure that you don't miss anything in starting your business. And if you're looking for a good resource, check the link below. It's a cool online tool. It's very affordable and it could help you put together a business plan if you're interested. Another area you want to research is funding your new business. Are there any tools or equipment that you need? Do you have a computer to do your billing and follow up on your payments? The good news is these funds are really small for a pet setting business. So you really don't need a lot of money. However, you are going to need funds to get your insurance, for gas, traveling, any of those things in the beginning. So just make sure you've thought it all through. Also, don't forget any money you might need to survive on, depending upon if you're working another job while you're trying to build your business or if you plan to jump ship right away. Pet sitting is a great business to build on the side with very little money up front. You just need to make sure that you think it all through in your situation. So please make sure you look at this. Now, another area that you need to make sure that you're diving into is getting paid because let's face it, you're not going to be working for free. Part of owning a business is that business owner's hat we talked about earlier. We're not building a job here. You need to make sure that you get paid. How are you going to do your invoicing? How are you going to be setting up for people to pay you? What if you do quotes? How do you plan to do that? What kind of accounting system are you going to use? Are you going to hire someone to do this accounting bookkeeping work for you? Or are you going to do it yourself? There's all kinds of great systems that are now online. I recommend QuickBooks personally because I think it's a very easy system for most people to do and it's very affordable. At the end of the day, I just want to make sure you get paid. I watch so many small business owners mess this part up when they do it and they forget to follow up on getting paid. 
I know it sounds crazy not to get paid, but believe it or not, they forget to send out the bill because they're so busy, or if it's not paid, they fail to follow up. You need to ask yourself questions like, are you going to take payment up front, or are you going to allow people to pay you afterwards? How are you going to handle it if someone doesn't pay? These are the things that you need to think about. Now, another part of your research before you open up your business is the marketing and branding, and you need to understand the difference. Marketing is basically how you're going to tell people about your business, and branding is how the public thinks about your business. You want to make sure that you know how you plan to brand your business, and then figure out how you plan to do the marketing piece of getting the business out there. After all, how are people even going to use you if they don't even know you exist? How do you plan to get your word out about the business you just started? Keep in mind, there are free versions of marketing and there are paid versions. The free one is where you really want to focus on in the beginning because word of mouth by far is the best marketing tool that you have. And there are some people that have never had to pay for advertising just because of this word of mouth. And today, there's so many great tools to help you get things out there for free. First and foremost, you need to sign up for your Google business page and the Bing version of their business page. People will do two things when they have that pain point I was telling you about. They're either going to ask a friend or a family member who they trust, or they're going to Google it. And you want to make sure that you can be found on Google. As you build your business, if you do it right, your happy clients are going to work on that referral piece for you and get you tons of business. You can also hop on free Facebook chats in your community or even the Nextdoor app. Be part of the community's conversation. Don't hit them over the head that you have a pet sitting business, but work it in naturally. If you're part of the community, people are going to be more likely to trust you. So please make sure that you're taking advantage of all the free tools that are out there to get your name in the community. Later, you can look into paid options like Facebook ads, postcards, flyers. But I promise you, if you really focus on good marketing with the free stuff and you really take care of your clients, you are going to have more business than you can handle. So step one is get that Google business page set up. And step two is to hop into those community conversations, but make sure you're only in there 10 to 20 minutes a day. I don't want you to get lost and go down the rabbit hole. Now, if you're thinking about hiring people, you really need to do some research on costs. For most people that are starting a pet sitting business, you will not have this cost in the beginning because the odds are you're going to go at this solo. But please plan on doing more research as your business grows before you make that first hire. You want folks that represent the brand you are building, so keep that in mind as well. You want to hire the best, you want to train them well, and you want to set clear expectations. But having employees comes with a financial cost as well, so you need to know your business numbers and how you're going to meet all of those legal requirements that you have for having employees. Once again, I go into more detail on this piece in the course, and since you probably won't have employees in the beginning, I'm not going to dive into this much further. Okay, there's one last big area that you need to make sure you understand, and it can mean the difference between you creating a job for yourself or a true business. You must learn your business numbers. More people mess up their business because they don't understand their business numbers. They fail to put a plan in place on how they're going to create sales and then how they're going to spend the money. They fail to understand what are their cost of goods and what are their expenses. They fail to understand that their pricing needs to cover all of their costs, all of their expenses, and their taxes, plus any business needs for the future. Oh, and by the way, pay you the business owner. The number one calculation that I preach is sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. And then keeping in mind, your profits must cover those taxes, future business needs, and the owner's draw you plan to take. You really have to have a good grasp and understanding of your pricing, of what is margin, what are markup, what's a profit and loss statement. There are just so many different things that are out there that you need to understand from the beginning of your business. Remember, you get paid two ways in your business. One is the employee doing the work, and then is the business owner when the business is profitable. If the business is not profitable, then you, the employee, has to pay the cost. So you want to make sure that you learn how to do this right. I have a few videos here where I go over on how to read a profit and loss, how to do pricing, and how to pay yourself correctly. And I encourage you to check them out. Plus, in the show notes, I do have a Know Your Business Numbers course, which is very affordable and will really help you on this piece. Remember, your profit and loss statement is your business's report card. It tracks all of the money in and out of your business. And this is why you really need to have a good understanding of how to read one of these. 
As I mentioned earlier, you are starting this business to make a great living, to create a profitable business. Remember, you are running a business. You're not creating a job for yourself. After all, if you're just going to create a job, why have all those extra headaches? Just go work for somebody else. Running a business isn't easy, but it can be very rewarding both personally and financially. You just want to start off on the right foot. Do your research, get things in order, have a plan, learn those business numbers, and enjoy years of success. A pet sitting business is a wonderful business because your community has a ton of need for you. Nobody can do it like you, so get out there and be the best pet sitting business that you can have.